And this is the Gemini Twins card trick, which was featured in Carl Fulves, I believe that's his name. Hope I'm not butchering it. In his self-working card trick book. So cards can be shuffled and start out impromptu, which is a great point of this trick or advantage point. Um, so I'm going to actually remove uh, two cards, if I may. I'm going to remove uh, this one, and let me remove one more. Let's see. Right here. Okay, I'll remove them and set them aside. We'll come back to them in a second. So I hand out this deck to a spectator. Uh, I can be hands-free from this point, which is really, really good. Great for self-working effects. <laughs> um, so we'll have the cards being dealt, like so. And whenever the spectator likes, this is the spectator doing these actions. And they would be dealing in a pile, like so. They can stop whenever they like. And let's say they're very nitpicky about where they want to go. And let's say right there. Okay, you were very specific in where you wanted to stop at. And we'll place the one predictions, the six of hearts, right there. Okay, the card can be squared in, left out, whichever. I'll just square it up so you can see it. So that was the first prediction. And again, the spectator would be taking control of the cards and they can uh, stop whenever they like again. And they're very nitpicky. And let's say, very, or very, not nitpicky, very specific. I actually want to encourage creativity where I can. So they specifically stop there. Do you want to deal one more card? They say two, okay, fine. Two cards, you were very specific. You stopped there, you had a choice. And we'll put the second prediction, King Diamonds, right there. Okay. And it's in their control. And they would then spread the cards, or I can maybe assist in just spreading the cards. I want to pretty much be hands off where I can. And I said, you, you know, you stop whenever you want. You had the urge. You, you determined these points. And what's interesting is that um, where the Six of Hearts was, you, the card right above it, you happen to match it perfectly with six diamonds. I don't know how you can match it that precisely, but there's no way we can match it twice. I mean, King of Diamonds matching it with the, oh, wow, King of Hearts would make for an amazing effect. A double prediction, the Gemini Twins, an amazing card trick. And I thank you. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed the performance. We'll jump into explanation in just a sec, but before I do, uh, if you give the video a like, that would be awesome. <laughs> and uh, we'll jump right into this effect. Um, it really is impromptu, which I really love about it. So cards can be shuffled. And when you're ready, and you can even do this trick borrowed, which makes it so powerful. You take the deck into your hands, and uh, you spread on through. And you are, what you are doing, I keep on getting sixes and kings. That's weird. Let me, let me cut the pack. So we get a, a variety. So what we look for is uh, we are looking at the top, the top and bottom cards. So seven of clubs and queen of clubs. And what we are going to do is we're going to choose the mates of these cards and remove them as predictions. So in the, uh, let's say we see queen of clubs right away. We opt for the queen of spades going through the pack. And we see the Queen of Spades with the up jogging. Now, we would not do this towards the audience. That would be obvious and bad. So we up jog it towards ourselves. So we see it and we up jog it. And just for explanation purposes, this is the Queen. Now we push towards the top as we go back and uh, we immediately see Seven of Clubs. So we're going for Seven of Spades. And I say, oh, okay, we're, and we're gonna make a couple predictions. So I, again, these are up towards me. And I just happen to notice very right beginning, Seven of Spades. Is right here okay so we get these two cards remove them and just set them aside but remember which one is which so as i said down you can actually just peek your prediction again with the order so seven of spades queen of spades okay like so you then hand the deck to the spectator and this is where you can be really hands off and this is kind of nice especially for the heckler type spectators this is their the effect to confuse them because there's no sleight of hand, it's hands off, it's great. So, uh, they take the deck and you tell them to deal into a pile. You may have to instruct and be clear about how you want it to be dealt. Even though we as magicians know, spectators might be new to this, so it always helps to be clarify. And you're going to have them deal cards off the top deck. Make sure they deal the first card, which is one of the predictions. Deal it, it's a seven. 
deal it, and then you can't have them just keep on dealing. And don't make a, a big deal about it, just deal it out. And say they can stop dealing whenever they feel like it. Okay? And notice one thing, let me go back. Okay? What we're going to use for our first prediction is the uh, bottom card, which is the Queen of Clubs. It might get confusing in a second, but just it, it helps to clarify and makes it so much easier. Just remember, Queen of Clubs, we're going to be using as the first key card. So, to have it dealt out whenever they like. And again, the first card was Seven Clubs. And they say stop here. Okay. Now remember, we look at the bottom, we go for the bottom card, and if we need to uh, remember which cards which top and bottom, even before the whole thing, you uh, you could have all the cards square, you could just do a um, end for end turnover, so just like this. So a middle finger and thumb, middle finger and thumb, takes from, we turn side, down, our hand, our recessive hand goes down, our dominant hand grips it, and we turn it. Just like you're squaring cards. Let's say you're all messed up and you want to square them, you would just square them like this. It's not a normal thing a lot of normal uh, bridge players and, and, and card players do. It's just a natural thing. And while you're doing this, you could actually cite the bottom card, which is cool. So, there you go. I noticed it's Queen Clubs. So, anyways, you, they, you dealt and you stopped right here. And we know this card right here from peeking it was a seven of spades. So we would want to opt for this prediction. So we take it and you say, okay, I'm going to place this card right here, place everything on top, and just square for my ease sake. And you can just square like this. Okay, all the cards square. Spectator would again take cards. They can stop whenever they like. Just not at that, you know, the, the face of card because then it would separate the predictions. But pretty much you have a large leeway of where you can stop. So let's say they say stop right here, okay? Now we know because we dealt the first card at the deck and then put everything on top, um, we got our seven of clubs to the bottom deck, which is now our key card when we dealt it out again. It's a pretty cool concept. It, it works itself. It's so cool when you get a good self-working card trick. So we so we say they say stop right there, okay? And then you get your second prediction, turn it face up, and say this will be the second prediction right here. And the and I want to test your your psychic. You, you, the whole presentation could be testing your psychic presence or something to that nature. I want to test your psychic presence. Okay, I'm going to move two cards, but I want you to control the points, and then they deal out. And then if you say stop. They done it again. They say stop again. Okay, and I wanted to test your psychic presence. Okay, or or your your vibe to see if you can do it, okay? And what's amazing, and you can take the cards and spread them, or they could spread them out like this, is you stopped at two particular points, okay? For the Queen of Spades, and this is uh, quite interesting, because the card usually works the first time. I don't know about the second time, but the first time, Queen of Spades, I don't know how you stopped it perfectly, adds mate, the Queen of Clubs. And what you're doing is you're just revealing the key card <laughs> that they have stopped at. So the key card is um, matched with this card, uh, the, the card you had like, predicted. And it feels like they get all the credit for it. Wow, you did it. You stopped perfectly. <laughs> or something of that nature, which is crazy. Now you said, now the second one, go to the seven of spades. Okay. And seven of spades, you could have stopped anywhere. You we stopped right there. I put the seven of spades, and I don't know how you do it, how you do it, but you stopped at that seven of clubs, matching it perfectly. That's crazy. And again, the key card is just matching there, but what's amazing is the spectator feels like they stop perfectly. They get all the credit for it, and because there's no real moves and it's out of your hands, and they got to do it all, it gives them further credibility to that effect, which is. Pretty amazing, I think. Uh, a double key card prediction, lots of magic. So popular, um, the famous magician Doug Kahn actually, you, I think I noticed or was reading, he actually uh, has been practicing this effect for like 40 years or using it for 40 years. So that shows its uh, reliability <laughs> in the hands of professionals. <laughs> um, or my fellow, fellow magician professionals. So, 
I hope you enjoy the Twin Gemini card trick. Uh, I would encourage you that I showed this little piece to encourage you to check out more of Carl Foos's books, uh, which I will link down in the description below because I want to encourage his work. He had some great work and other little card tricks in case you want to check that out. Um, and if you haven't checked out this video yet, you definitely want to check it out and I'll see you there.